Today, we build a Peugeot. But why? Welcome to Bricks and Toys. My name is Brandon, and I am here today with the new, as of May, Peugeot 9x8 Technic set. Now, this is set number 42156, coming in at 1,775 pieces. Now, in my intro, why? Now this is a question I found myself asking, and that is why this video is one month late. Why? I like reasonable cars. I'm not a guy that goes, ooh, that looks shiny. I must have that. Or, ooh, that's cool. I don't know nothing about it, but I'll buy it. I don't usually roll like that. But when I saw some of the part usage with this Technic set combined with overall looks of it, I really started getting the wheels turning. And the wheels were turning from May 1st. But at that time, I was so focused on getting all the Star Wars sets and getting all of the May the 4th Be With You, uh, Lego Week, you know, on and produced, that it just washed out. And the thing is, is I still could not get it out of my mind because it did look cool. But why do I really want a car that's forever out of my league, as well as billions of other people's league, in my collection? I am an, I am an American. I like foreign cars. But when it comes to French cars, I don't really do French cars. Peugeot is from French is from France. They got their start making, I believe, bicycles and kitchen utensils. Went into making cars, and they're pretty successful in their own country. But I don't really mesh well. So, long story short, guys, I eventually caved in, and we got the Peugeot 9x8 Technic set. And you know what? I think it's okay because I am facing a love-hate relationship with this channel. One of the upcoming builds on this channel while I'm going to go see Blink-182 will be a Ferrari. I think it's the 488 GTE, the uh, race car that's about to be retired from Technic as well. That was my first biggest Technic build. It's kind of weird with the way the scheduling worked out with this month. The first $200 Technic build is technically airing after this, but anyway. But after doing that build, I really felt like, you know, we really need to keep going and doing Technic. So part of that was just submitting to the idea that Yes, this looks cool. The part usage is unique. And let's add another Technic set to the collection. So far, they all have been pretty good. Low expectations for the cheaper ones. Um, even though the 4GT was really astonishing, I really liked that one a lot. They did an excellent job at that. The Dom's Charger, not so good. And... The Ferrari coming out after this in a few days. That one was great. You guys will see that video soon. So let's go ahead and let's do our second $200 Technic vehicle set. And my thoughts about this set is exactly how I've been piecing it together for the beginning part of this video. It looks cool. What do I know about the car? I looked it up online. On the box, it says 24 hours of Le Mans. 
but when I looked up online, I can't find a Le Mans pedigree behind this car. It says that it's part of some endurance racing that's based on Le Mans, but not actually in the 24 hours of Le Mans, so I don't know which is true. On the subject of Le Mans, one of the reasons I figured this video is appropriate is by the time this video airs, we just went through the 24 hours of Le Mans over the weekend. Because I do believe it comes out June 10th to June 11th. It is a 24-hour endurance race. And this vehicle is advertised to be a part of it. Even though I can't really find much information. Overall, it is a, hy a hybrid hypercar. That, that means it is gasoline and electric. Which means... It could potentially haul a lot of butt and be really fast. But again, with a name like Peugeot, is it? I mean, I'm not going to dig deep to find out. I would just expect, you know, more, you know, stout car names like Porsche, Jaguar, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Aston Martin those guys to be kind of more up at the top you know for any type of endurance racing not really a Peugeot so with that I really don't know why this set even exists but today like I said it doesn't matter that's what I know about it and we're gonna build it so on the terms of building it let's go ahead let's get out my box cutter let's cut open the box and let's see what we have Now I will say this box does have a decent amount of weight, but I do suspect it to have maybe seven bags. Let's go ahead and let's grab our, our workbook here. Let's see what we are working with. We do have four tires. It's about the same size as the Ferrari uh, 488 that comes up in a couple days. It does come with two sticker sheets with a combined amount of stickers. That looks to be about 41 stickers. So it is going to be super sticker heavy. Even though on the advertisements, it doesn't look like that. But that's okay, guys. Stickers. The build coming up in a few days, the Ferrari 488, that thing was worse than that. Again, check out that video. So as I'm looking through this book, I do want to say that one of the really cool factors of this build is it's rumored that these front pieces are of a lightsaber element from like Star Wars and they glow in the dark. And to be honest with you guys, that little gimmick kind of uh, pushed me over the edge to get this set because I really wanted to see, you know, that part usage. It looks really cool. So when it comes to steps, we're looking at about 611 steps and 375 pages. So not too shabby. And far as bag count goes, like the Ferrari 488, five bags, not seven, five. So there is some double bags. So this is going to be very exciting. The book is pretty thick. Again, like I said, I have a love-hate thing with Technic because it's just a bunch of small pieces that make a big-ass car. How in the world does that work? It just does. Like, why is the sky blue? It just is. You know what I mean? I'm excited to get into this and get my fingers building again. And all you guys got to do is watch that time lapse. So we'll be back here in a few minutes for you and for me, probably a couple days.
So now it's time to review the Peugeot 9x8 Lego Technic set. And I have to say, doing it just because it looks cool pays off, everybody. Just going to take you around. This doesn't really fit on a turnstile. So now I'm just going to bring you in. We'll get more into these glow-in-the-dark bits so you guys can get a sense of what those look like. But yeah, this is a really cool set. Not sure if I'm a big fan in the, of the open fender design. But this does open up. You can see the suspension spring. Not a lot of travel with this suspension. But you can see what they try to mimic like an electric motor. Really good detail. That closes. It does have two functioning doors. One on that side. And one on the other side. We'll leave those open for now. For now you can get a sense of... The car in that point. Not much going on there. And then on the other side, you can see a full working steering wheel. If I turn the wheels, the steering wheel does move. Doors easily close back down. There is a knob up here to activate that steering. I'm not sure how the front drive works with that electric motor. It is full of gears, so it does do something. And I've kind of had a hard time rolling the car because of it. So I'm not quite sure what all that's about. There is some Lego sorcery going on with those electric motors in the front. Coming down to the side profile. Really cool part usage to make this car. It is an absolute looker of a vehicle. This is going to be a Lego Technic set that I think a lot of people are going to regret sleeping on. Just stunning. The back does lift off, where you can see the whole piece. Now you can see that V6 motor. I do believe that these are trying to represent um, the turbos. So it is a dual turbocharged electric motor in the front hypercar. My guess is this thing could probably really get down and boogie in real life. Again, it's got that travel suspension with the singular spring. That is a really cool engineering touch. And, like most techniques, if you move it, that does move. Going down to the bottom of the vehicle. Flip it up on its side. There you can see that singular spring. And the front, it's on the top. And the back, it's on the bottom. Look at all those Technic components. There is a sticker element down here on the bottom of the car. I thought that was unique. Probably something to do with the electrical system. Here we get an under look at the gears and stuff that make the front electrical motor. It does something, like I said, I've had it lock up and as you can see, the, the wheel is turning and the other side's not, like it's a limited slip. So I'm not quite sure what that is about. But yeah. Put it back down. The back cover goes back on just like so. Simple. Like I said, guys, this is a definite slept-on set. Now, let's shut off the lights and let's look at those front glowing light bars. Ziggy, turn off studio. And there you can get a look at how that glows. Again, that's just with the spotlight lamp. And look at that glow. Wow. 
Ziggy, turn on studio. So that wraps it up for this review. Now let's hop over and let's give my final thoughts on this incredible set. So now it is our always predicted last segment of the show. And that is the final thoughts. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, the first thought that comes to mind is, let me get something for you guys and set this down. Here you guys go. This is a pillow. You know why I'm, I'm handing you guys a pillow? Do you? I'm going to tell you why. Because if you have not thought about this set, got this set, or anything with this set, you sleeping. So, if you're sleeping, then here's a comfortable pillow. And I tell you, these pillows are comfortable. And the reason that I say that is, this thing is remarkable. We all do not really here in America, well at least where I'm from, really carry names like Peugeot around the house. Even a more common name from Italy, Fiat, we just don't. These are European car brands and we just don't think about them. We're more caught up in BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen. We just overlook things like Peugeot. And to the Lego designer who stepped up and said, I want to make a Technic model of the 24 Hours of Le Mans 9x8 Peugeot, and Lego let him do it, I want to say to that designer, I am glad that I have an open mind and I tried your design because this is remarkable. And I'm going to tell you why I find it remarkable. And in me telling you why I find it remarkable, you can figure out why I'm trying to hand you a, a pillow to go and keep sleeping. Because let's just start off from the front back. The glow in the dark elements. Super gimmicky, but they are cool. Like what you saw in that review segment before this segment, I turned off the lights. As soon as the camera adjusted, they were just like, whoosh. That to me is just beautiful. Again, I know it's a gimmick, but it's cool. Then the next thing, the suspension, the single spring suspension. This is a common thing found with, you know, high performance supercars, hypercars, you know, I forgot what it's called, cantilever, I'm not quite sure. I'm not really into these expensive exotics to, to know what exactly that is, but it's basically using one spring to control the, you know, the two wheels, either in the front or rear of the vehicle. So to have a special part to do that is just amazing. Now, me being of an engineer kind of mindset, I did take one of these kind of apart. It is a metal spring inside of the plastic with a little plastic shroud for, you know, this is more for cosmetic purposes. But it does look really cool when you're using it. So yeah. So that to me is really cool. Next up, the hybrid motors, the electric motors to, to be more exact. The fact that they put this special geared motor, like it takes five of the special gears that slide in and lock in and they, they do something with the front wheels that kind of resemble a limited slip diff, but for the electric motor, that to me is really cool. They didn't have to do, to do that detail. They, they make these $50 Technics that I have. They don't even care about that. And they chose to do that on a $200 set. So to me, that quality and that detail is really unique. Going up, the interior is really standard, run-of-the-mill. And 
going into the back of the vehicle, this design, this whole lifting up with the four pins that lock it into the body, so you can see the rear engine, really awesome. And then on viewing the rear engine, you can see the little turbos. I think those are turbos. They are really large if they are turbos, but you know, Lego parts, they probably do the best that they can. So, you know, if those are turbos, then this is a, you know, bi-turbo, twin-turbo, you know, V6 with a electric drive, which would make it a hypercar and really freaking fast. But they also tried to put these covers in over the motor for a little bit of extra detail, kind of like a valve cover, I'm going to guess. So that's really cool. Again, the traditional gearing in the rear end resembling like a limited slip diff, that's pretty normal. I do like how the exhaust that's coming off of what I think is the turbos it does kind of pop up above the body right there. I think that's really unique. And the overall back detail, the one thing I, I would kind of like to have gotten with this set is maybe a translucent red piece for the, what resembles the taillights, if this is the taillights that it's supposed to resemble. But instead we got these just, you know, straight solid red with a sticker element but maybe that's just for the better. But that's me really nitpicking. Another little things that I notice is the wheels, the main design of the wheels is actually on the inside of the vehicle where the more unprettier is actually the main wheel that they used for the car. So, you know, that's no big deal, I understand. And then, just overall, all of the parts like this set was 1,775 pieces, and they did an excellent job. I really did not expect to say this at this portion of the video, but I'm going to say it. This Peugeot has pushed me more into liking and appreciating the Technic lineup. I've had a really hard time on this channel, guys. If you guys watch all the videos, you guys know already. I don't really like Technic. It takes too long. I built this over the period of about 9 hours, maybe 10. The build is complicated, but it goes together really well. And the reward that I get at the end of this rainbow really makes me want to do more Technic. And that's really, you know, and that's really a good thing because that means my patience is getting better and now I'm looking more into the reward. Bad thing about it is, is the moment I do a bad Technic set, I'm just going to be like, I'm done with Technic again. Maybe. We'll see. I can tell you right now, coming up on the channel, I have two Technic builds planned, maybe a third one in August. I know right now, in either the end of this month or beginning of next month, we do have the firefighter plane coming up. And then I am going to purchase the Agile Blue uh, Bugatti Bullade to match my yellow one. So that's coming up in, I'm not sure if that's out now or in August, but it's one of those two. But in August or September, I'll get my dates all mixed up. I just made the video yesterday, guys. You guys know what I'm talking about. They got the the remote uh, controlled Audi e-tron. Now that one I'm definitely looking into. I don't know what it is. It just looks cool. And since this one looked cool and had a great reward, you know what? Let's do another one that looks cool. Why the hell not? No matter what, I'm a review channel. My job is to, re to review these sets for you guys, and let's just let's just do it. So with that, guys. This set is incredibly slept on. If you're not sure about it, and maybe you're not sure because you don't really want a Peugeot in your set, kind of like how I originally felt, or it seemed a little bit too exotic for your taste, you know, with what you have in your collection. Guys, it's an amazing build. It's got amazing part usage, and the cosmetic appearance of it is just remarkable. This will pair up nicely to the the Ferrari 488 GTE that comes out, I believe, on Thursday. So, that is one really good thing. If you already have that build, this one should look good with it. 
So yes, I do recommend this build. It is 200 U U US dollars, but it's worth it. And I'm really surprised I'm saying that because I'm still fighting off being sick from the cruise. I'm still fighting off travel fatigue and I'm still fighting off whatever the hell else. I'm on 260 milligrams of caffeine a day for the last three or four days. I cannot stay awake, so my level of patience is absolutely pressed. But I was able to do a full eight hour workday on this, enjoyed every bit of it, even with that mindset. And now looking at it, I'm excited about it. So if this could override my emotions that I have right now that's on autopilot, then that tells you a little bit about the set. So if you guys like videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe. Everything you guys are doing super helps the channel. This is the first actual build back from my vacation. I think the next actual build will be the Brick Bank. So look out on Sunday for the welcome video for that Brick Bank and the other two sets that I have planned. So on that one, everybody, thank you for watching. I appreciate you all, and you all have a very good one.